Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time uh, you're tuned in to this broadcast. We thank you so much um, for tuning in. This is Frederick Robinson, um, and I am the youth pastor of the Liberty Missionary Baptist Church. And um, as always, we're going to start with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Um, Father, you... You're so good. You're so awesome. We thank you today. We love you today. We thank you for the freedom that we have in Christ. We thank you for this word. I pray that it would be a liberating word. A heart changing word. A heart stirring word. A convicting and challenging word. But Lord, I just thank you that it's your word. Touch every listener today. Meet us at the point of our need. And Lord, when all is said and done, I pray that your people will be helped and your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name, touch somebody who's worried this morning that they worry may fade away. In your love, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this is Frederick Robinson again, you pastor Liberty Missionary Baptist Church where the Reverend Dr. Clyde May Jr. is the pastor. Um, we thank every one of you for tuning in. Um, we give praise to God for our being here this morning, another blessed day that the Lord have kept us. Um, we thank all of you. We thank our pastor, Dr. May. Thank you for this opportunity to share God's word uh, to the Libertonians. We, we thank God for you, for your daily and weekly prayers for us, for me, my family, um, to my wife, April, to my daughters, Carly and Kaylee. We love you. We thank you. Uh, God is so good to us, so good to me. Um, and to all of you who are tuned in from wherever you're tuned in from, we thank God for you as well. And also to my partner in these Sunday School Reviews, Sakoni Prince, who helps me uh, every other week and sharing these, these messages. You can go to the Liberty page if you never heard Sakoni speak. Um, do yourself a favor. It will be a treat. He's also a motivational speaker. Um, so just thought I'd throw that plug, but uh, thank God for you, Sakoni, and I pray you're doing well and your family is doing well as well. Um, our lesson today, uh, Sunday School Review Lesson 6, we're in Unit 2, Songs of the Old Testament, um, our title today is Regret and Remorse, and our printed passage is Psalms 51, 1 through 4, 10 through 12, 15 through 17. Uh, key verse says this, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Psalms 51, 10. Lesson aim says, as a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do the following Interpret Psalms 51 through the lens of King David's experience of repentance um, and forgiveness. And then number two, it says confess personal or corporate sins that require repentance. Um, David's and then point three says adapt David's psalm as a personal model of repentance. Number two, confess personal and corporate sins that require repentance. Again, amen. So we have a dynamic lesson today. Our introduction uh, really breaks it down. It says repentance is a powerful tool that offers healing, redemption, and restoration. The stories of two women, Laura Barnett and Sandra Spannon, and the timeless truths of Psalm 51 illustrate this. On the street, Laura Barnett and Sandra Spannon invited passerbyers to unburden their souls through confession, offering a unique encounter with vulnerability. Meanwhile, Sandra Spannon painted portraits of those who stopped to divulge their confessions. Similarly, the story of King David in 2 Samuel 12 reflects his silent confessions. David's humble plea for cleansing and renewal in Psalm 51 led to forgiveness and restoration, becoming a blueprint for healing. 
The lessons from Laura Barnett and Sandra Spannon and King David teach us that healing begins with our acknowledging our secrets, sins, and brokenness. Our vulnerability becomes a canvas for transformation and God's response to our repentance is mercy and restoration. Repentance is not a weakness, it's a strength. And it's the bridge from darkness to light, from guilt to grace. Amen. What an awesome lesson we have before us this morning. This is one of those lessons that most people, one, wouldn't want to teach. And then, two, wouldn't want to listen to. But I applaud you for even seeing the title and sticking with the lesson. Amen. Because it's goodness in all the Bible. Amen. Verse 1 says, Psalms 51, if you don't have the Sunday school book, you can follow along with your Bible. Psalms 51 says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against thee thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Amen. The psalmist begins by asking God for help, requesting that he show mercy and forgive his wrongdoing. Although the title of the psalm refers to David's adultery with Bathsheba, the psalm is intended as a template for others to use David's prayer as their own. The psalmist based his plea on God's unfailing love and great compassion grounded in God's covenant with Israel. The psalmist metaphorically asked God to wash him clean of his sin. In verses 3 and 4, the psalmist acknowledged his wrongdoing and recognized that his sin was an offense against God. Although his historical title refers to David's sin with Bathsheba, the psalmist statement is a hyperbole. hyperbole recognition that the worst part of sin is rebelling against God. Thus, the psalm is not limited to David's event, but is written for community use. The psalmist reminds us that although sin has consequences for others, the worst offense is against God. Going up to verse 10, this psalm says, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out mine iniquities amen david <laughs> sent forth a plea for god's mercy and for for those of us who know the story i know we're mostly all familiar that david had had um slept with another man's wife and then had the husband killed and then had taken the wife in after she had mourned for her husband. He took her in and he ended up conceiving a child with her, which later died. But David had messed up. You ever been there? Ever messed up? Ever made him? I, I, one thing I love about this lesson is all of us can relate. 
None of us can look down at David and say, you should have knew better. Hopefully that's not what we're doing because the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. We've all, to sin means to miss the mark. And we've all missed the mark. We've all got regret and remorse. Well, we've messed up. Off tell time, a time when God led me to go to a place that I wouldn't want, I didn't want to go, and I ran from it, and I spent all this time running, only to go back and end up doing it anyway. Because you cannot run from God. But the part that I love. In my running, I'm talking about not after, in my running, God was merciful. He was patient. He sent someone by just to remind me of what I already knew. And then he allowed me to go. And then in, in my going, what I did not know, and I was telling somebody this yesterday morning, that in God was preparing me for where he has positioned me today. It was all a part of his plan. But what do you do when you mess up? You confess up. There's a, there's a blessing in confessing. We all can learn from David. David set an example. Listen, have mercy upon me, O oh God, <laughs> according to your loving kindness according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions and wash me thoroughly. You think he's serious? From mine iniquity and cleanse me, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and I've done this evil in thy sight. I love it because David kept saying sin. You know, we live in a time now that we're so politically correct that we don't like to say sin. We like to say Mr. Mark. We like to say faults. We like to say failures. We like to say shortcoming. But it's sin. And sin is sin. And we're all familiar with it. It's one of those words that sometimes we ought to just say it out of our mouth. And in a weird way, I think it's kind of good for us to say sin because this world trying to woo us into not saying sin, but sin is sin. And David said, against thee only have I sinned. I, I slept with someone's wife. And I had them murdered. God, I sinned. And some of us can, God, I lied. God, I cheated. God, I talked about somebody. God, I disobeyed. God, I messed up. I sinned. And believe it or not, <laughs> oh God, it's a blessing. In confessing. David said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. In the previous verses, the psalmist had been asking God to remove his sin and its consequences. However, in verse 10, he changed his request to something positive. He asked for a pure heart and a steadfast spirit, realizing that he needed this new disposition to avoid sin in the future. He acknowledged that he, being a person steeped in sin, was incapable of such a transformation of character Without divine help, the psalmist used the verb create to express the need for divine intervention. 
He feared that God might abandon him because of his sin, just as Moses appealed to God not to withdraw his presence from Israel. Verse 11 mentions the Holy Spirit, which Christians tend to interpret as a reference to the third person of the Trinity. However, Old Testament readers of this psalm would have thought that this as a reference to God, who is a spirit and holy. Get this, the psalmist wanted to feel joy, the joy of a healthy relationship with God again. He desired a steadfast and willing spirit to keep from sinning. The what do you think says, how can we cultivate a steadfast spirit and remain faithful even in challenging circumstances? And one thing that I wrote is reading and praying God's word daily. The psalmist desired for a clean heart and a right spirit. And one thing that I said earlier this week is when, when you've had a relationship with God, when you've walked with God, amen, when you've experienced his peace, when you have experienced his goodness, when you've experienced his joy, you know when you've lost it. You know when it's gone. And you just can't get right. You can't sleep right. You can't eat right. When, 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 when God's joy is gone, when his peace is removed from your life, when his goodness seems to flee from you. And as Pastor May preached it one time, he said, I had it, I lost it, and I want it back. Maybe somebody listening today, you're in a place where you've messed up and this message is resonate. Maybe you said something wrong. Maybe you, you, you've done something wrong. Maybe you slept with somebody's wife or husband. Maybe you stepped outside on your marriage. Maybe you're addicted to drugs. Maybe you're just lost in sin. This text is telling us that in Jesus Christ, we can be set free. If you notice, David asked God, Creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. <laughs> Getting right with God is not about us. It's about us trusting in Jesus and what he's done for me. God said in Isaiah, though your sins be like scarlet, I will make them white. I'll make you white like snow. When we come to God in true repentance, God will bring us into a relationship with Christ and wash all of our sins away. Don't miss this forever. The Bible says that in Christ we've been sanctified forever. I'm going to let somebody in on a little secret that you may not know. Your sanctification, the cleanliness of your life is really about Christ and not about you. It's about us trusting in what he's done for us. Many people are spinning around in circles because they're trying to please God with self-effort, which we can never do. The Apostle Paul put it this way, if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ died for nothing. In other words, if we could be made right with God by keeping rules and regulations and rituals, then God would have kept Jesus in heaven and just told us to live right. But we can never live good enough to receive God's righteousness and mercy and forgiveness. So this song by David encourages us to run to God for salvation in Christ and to flee from the wrath to come. Because there is a day coming where God is going to come back and Jesus is going to return. And all of those who are outside of Christ will be separated from God 
forever into a life of pain, misery, flame, weeping and gnashing of teeth where the Bible calls it hell. And those who have trusted in Christ will go to heaven. The final section says the sacrifice that God desires. Oh Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth praise. For thou desires sacrifice, thou desires not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou desires not burnt offering. Get this, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, thou will not despise. David was saying, God, help me to praise you again. Help me to have that relationship with you again. Amen. He said, God, you don't desire these sacrifices. And the entire Bible agrees with the act that sacrificing an animal does not automatically restore one's relationship with God. Instead, it must reflect sinners' acknowledgement that they deserve the same punishment of the animal. So David was saying, God, you don't require from us the sacrifice of animals you require a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart a person who is repentant a person who is tired of living a life outside of god then god steps in when we trust in christ when we say lord i can't do it on my on my own david said i messed up and I don't know how to get back right. And, and the Bible said that he went a, a year. Or should I say many commentaries have come to say that Dave, that, but in between this confession and his sin with Bathsheba, there was over a year's time. And I know it was some of the most miserable time of his life. I'll say this as we close. In Christ, we can never lose our salvation, but we can lose our fellowship with God. The word saved means that we secure forever. We've been sanctified forever, but you can lose your fellowship with God through sin. That's why daily confession is good. Lord, forgive me for the sins that I know about and the sins that I don't. Here's a closing thought. Psalms 51 is a prayer that asks God for mercy and compassion to forgive sins and restore a relationship with him. It is written as an example of repentance for worshipers and gives hope that God will indeed forgive sins. Christians still find the psalm relevant today as they also seek forgiveness and restoration from God. The prayer reminds us that restoration depends on God's grace and that he responds to genuine repentance, not just following rituals. Christians also read and use this song, remembering that our forgiveness is only possible because of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let's pray. The Heavenly Father, Thank you for the truth and wisdom in Psalms 51. Help us recognize our need for your forgiveness so that we may seek renewal and restoration in our lives. Create in us pure hearts and steadfast spirits so that we may experience the fullness of joy of your salvation. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your pity. Thank you for your never failing love. And I pray for every person who's tuned in today, especially those, Lord, who have messed up. Thank you for the confession. Lord, all of us could use some confession. We've all messed up. We've all missed the mark. We all come up short. If truth be told, Lord, we always need you, Lord. We can't make it without you. I pray right now, Lord, that you would liberate somebody. You would set somebody free 
who's been guilty, Lord, who's been dealing with guilt, and Satan have been beating them over the head, Lord, because of their shame and their, their mess-ups and their hang-ups. But, Lord, help them to know that Jesus was hung up for our hang-ups. And, Lord, as long as we trust in him, Lord, we have hope for tomorrow. We have hope for today. Lord, we've been set free. We've been washed clean by the blood of Jesus. We've been made new. Lord, help us to cling to Christ. Help us to, to trust in him, Lord. And help us to believe that it is finished. Help us, Lord, to put all of our hope in Jesus Christ. Help us, God. To say nothing in our hands we bring. Simply to the cross we cling. We thank you now. We love you. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. God sanctify you. Have a blessed week. Remember there is a blessing in confessing. And remember that the only sins that God doesn't forgive is the ones we don't confess. God have already paid it all through Christ. Put your trust in him today and go and live the saved life, the free life in Jesus Christ. And then finally, go out to the house of God and receive a fresh word from God to keep you motivated and encouraged to keep living for him. Have a blessed week. We love you in the name of Jesus. Amen.